まさか兄さんダメだあれ鋼の錬金術師 This movie Well, it's not very good. Now, I'm a pretty big fan of the manga series Full Metal Alchemist, as well as both of its anime adaptations. It follows the exploits of the Elric brothers, Edward and Alphonse, two alchemists, basically mages, who travel the country looking for clues to where they can find the legendary Philosopher's Stone, an artifact to amplify alchemical power which they want to use to restore their bodies, damaged years ago in a tragic accident. While this movie is still a lot better than that terrible Death Note movie that came out on Netflix last year, it's definitely got its own set of problems. If you've ever seen one of these Japan produced live action anime adaptation films, then you probably know what I'm talking about here. I've heard those Kenshin movies are actually pretty good, but I haven't seen them, so I can't comment. The visual effects are about what you would expect from a CGI heavy movie that doesn't have an enormous Hollywood budget behind it. That is to say, they aren't very good, but that's a totally superficial. Complaint, and the most important effect, Alphonse's armor, is good enough that it's not terrible. With Netflix's Death Note, the main problem with the film was the way it completely butchers all of the main characters' personalities and motivations to the point of non recognition. While, ironically, in this movie, the main problem for me boils down to the degree to which the filmmakers have tried to strictly adhere to the source material. This movie has a slavish devotion to costuming and production design to the point that it often feels more like I'm watching a bunch of cosplayers rather than people acting in a film. Like, I get that in the source material, The main character, Edward Elric, has bright blonde hair, but this wig or hair dye or whatever it is that's going on here looks really, really silly, and I wish they just kept the actor's natural hair color. A lot of these costumes just don't translate well into live action either. Edward, Envy, Lust, and Gluttony all look completely ridiculous in three dimensions, though I actually think the military uniforms and Alphonse's armor work pretty well. All of this is further hampered by the fact that nearly the entire cast is chewing every bit of scenery they can get their teeth into. But that wouldn't even bother me too much if not for the biggest problem with the film. It's absolutely terrible pacing. I actually do think they did a decent job of trimming down the plot of the 27 volume manga series to something manageable for its runtime, but as a result, what remains is near constant exposition and jarring shifts from scene to scene, recreating iconic moments from the series. It leaves very little room to breathe for character development, and it left me feeling exhausted by the end of the film, despite having already experienced the original series multiple times. I'm not sure how well anyone who hasn't already read the manga or watched one of the shows. Would be able to follow it. I'm guessing not too well. The structure of a movie should flow something like this. First A happens, which leads to B happening, which finally leads to C happening. Events all follow one another in a way that culminates organically in the finale. The plot of this movie, though, is structured more like this. First A happens, then B happens, then C happens. Events are mostly disconnected from one another without much connective tissue besides the main characters. That's fine in a long form story format, like a television show or a comic, where segments are broken down into specific sections, and there's more room to include side stories and breathe a bit between each important plot point, but a film doesn't work that way. It's a much shorter medium that's meant to be consumed from start to finish in usually under three hours. There are exceptions, obviously. But you get my point. So, when you're adapting a serialized story into a film, you need to know what to keep and what to cut. For example, there's absolutely no reason why the Tuckers needed to be included in this movie. I get that theirs is one of the most iconic parts of Full Metal Alchemist, but it's more of a subplot than anything else, and it really doesn't work as a part of this film. American superhero movies figured out how to do this years ago. You take the main characters and the broad thematic elements from the comic, then you pick one or maybe two. Of the more iconic stories from the series and write a mostly new story centered around those events. I do understand that manga is different from American comics in that they're usually a single story told by one or two people from start to finish, then they stop. Unlike American comics, which often run for decades with creative talents swapping in for one another every few years, and often include several total reboots along the way. Regardless, though, when you're making a movie like this, you've either got to find a way to streamline or change the story so that it works as a film, or you just need to forget about making a movie altogether and just do a TV show instead. There were about three times throughout the movie when I thought it must be almost over, only to realize there was still a ways left to go. For all that I've been bashing the movie, though, I should. 
should state for the record that I didn't feel insulted while watching it, which puts it leagues ahead of some other anime adaptations I can point to. You can tell that the people behind the movie were really giving it their best shot to try and make a watchable movie recreating its source material, and honestly, they did the best job that they reasonably could have of making a more or less one-to-one -one adaptation of Full Metal Alchemist's story. I just think that was the wrong way to go about it. I was kind of annoyed that most of my favorite characters were cut from the movie, though I completely understand why, and at least some of them will definitely be in the sequel. Which brings me to my last criticism of the film. This movie doesn't really have an ending, it sort of just stops, leaving room for one or two sequels to conclude the story. Full Metal Alchemist isn't a terrible movie, but it's not a very good one either. It's basically just a big chunk of the plot from the manga series, cut down to accommodate a 2 hour 15 minute runtime, at the expense of the source material's character and charm. It's really only intended for people who are already into the series, so to those people I would say maybe check it out as a curiosity, but for anybody else who seems interested, I would recommend just watching one of the anime series instead. Though if you're gonna pick one, Brotherhood is easily the better of the two. Thank you very much for watching Bull Session. If you liked this video, please click the like button and subscribe if you're new. Also up on the screen here, there's some other good stuff you can check out on this channel. I'd appreciate that. And uh, until next time, take care.